Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first day of the Dr. Michael Greger's uh, Daily Dozen Daily Lives over the next two weeks. So the schedule has been posted in the Facebook group, and uh, every day we'll talk. I will discuss one of the um, items in this Daily Dozen, and essentially why you should consider adding them to your diet. So, Dr. Mike, just a little background. Dr. Michael Greger is a physician who his story has been well documented, but essentially his grandmother had been sent home to die and then she undertook a plant-based diet and she went to live on 30 more years. And so he really made it his mission as a physician to really do evidence-based medicine. So his book, How Not to Die, is the most thoroughly researched book on um, how food affects our health. So he goes through thousands of studies every day. He's got a team of researchers. And, he, and he, essentially he came up with, um, based on all that research, his recommendations on what we should consume on a certain day. And that is really my goal, is my framework. When, I, when, I am walk, when I'm eating, when I'm figuring out what I'm going to eat, I try to get these 12 things in my diet um, every day. Now, I eat more, I might eat less. It, it's a framework. I don't drive myself crazy about it, but it's a good way. It also gives you enough fiber, gives you all the nutrients that you need. So I highly recommend the book. Um, so today we're talking about beans. So um, I listed in the, um, the information for this session what counts as beans. Pretty much any bean you can think of. Um, all beans, they can be canned or fresh, doesn't matter. Um, if they, you do get canned, just rinse them out so you get rid of the the salt. Um, soy milk um, would count. Um, it's processed, but it's still uh, good for you, would count as a serving. Uh, tofu is also processed, but still good for you. Uh, tempeh is a whole so soy food product. And then the servings are half a cup of beans um, or a quarter cup of hummus. And the recommend recommendation is three servings per day. Um, so let's talk about why. So cancer prevention. So colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related death in the United States. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that. And as a nurse practitioner, it's one of those things that drive me crazy when people won't go for colonoscopies. As I say, colon cancer, like breast cancer, is one of those few things that if you catch it early enough, it's curable. So it is really important to get your, your colonoscopies. Um, and so the thing about beans, so beans contain what... Um, a chemical called phytates. And phytates have been shown to detoxify excess iron in the body. Now, most of the way people get excess iron is by eating too much meat. But to detoxify this excess iron, and iron actually um, produces a free radical that is very toxic. They also target cancer cells through a combination of an antioxidant, kind of antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and immune enhancing activities. They've been shown to improve the activity of your natural killer cells, which are really important for um, your immune system. And studies done in petri dish, so there's desktop and then there's population studies. The petri dish studies have shown that, that the phytates in beans actually inhibit the growth of virtually all human cells cancer that, that have been tested so far. And they've done colon, um, ovarian, uh, breast, uh, stomach. So it's really, it's really amazing. Now, fiber. So only 3% of Americans get the recommended daily amount. Um, so that is, we don't have a protein deficiency, we have a fiber deficiency. So one of the many wonderful things that fiber does is it increases regularity. So one of the reasons, and this actually helps um, decrease your risk for colon cancer. So the, the number one reason um, for abdominal complaint, complaints, complaints um, in the United States is, is actually the underlying cause is constipation. So fiber actually increases intest intestinal transit time, intestinal transit time, meaning things move through faster. So and it appears, studies have shown that it appears that a slower transit time is associated with an increased risk of colon cancer. So this, the slow, the more time um, the stool is in your bowel, it allows any cancerous agents to spend more time in contact with the, the, the wall of our bowel is actually just one cell thick. So it allows, spends more time in contact with the wall. 
So, and therefore, more chance for it um, to mutate and become cancerous. Um, it also, fiber also decreases the risk of hiatal hernias and acid reflux. And this is by decreasing the pressure on the other end. So hiatal hernias and reflux is all about pressure issues. And if, you've, um, if you have increased irregularity in moving your bowels regularly, um, then you'll have decreased pressure and decreased risk of hiatal hernias and acid reflux, which acid reflux is not just a pain. It actually contributes to cancer um, of the esophagus. So having acid into the esophagus is a real big deal that we should really do everything we can to prevent. So, but fiber is also just a magic nutrient. It binds to toxins such as lead and mercury and cleans them out. It binds to cholesterol. Um, it also binds to, really importantly for women, it binds to excess estrogen, which can contribute to breast cancer. So beans are also a great source of calcium. So for osteoporosis, Studies show that people who eat a higher amount of beans tend to have a, actually have a greater bone mineral density. And I always say when it comes to getting your calcium, it's beans and greens, beans and greens. Calcium, um, bean, we'll talk about that in the green section, but um, tend to have a higher bone mineral density, less bone loss, and fewer hip fractures. Um, eating three servings a day has been shown to, shown to actually be bone restorative as effective as taking Fosamax. Um, so in terms of just overall health, um, beans have also been shown to be the most important predictor of survival in older people around the globe, not just in the United States. Um, that there's an, researchers have found there's an 8% decrease in premature death um, for people who um, have beans every day. So the more beans you have, the decreased um, risk of premature death. And I've talked about this in the live here before, but prebiotics. So our gut is full of good bacteria that is making all these short chain fatty acids, which essentially signals our cells and tells us what to do, tells our body what to do. So keeping those good gut bacteria happy is critically important to our health. So um, beans, they contain the fiber and also a certain type of starch that is found concentrated in beans. These, we can't process them, but the good bacteria can. So the beans really help feed that good bacteria, which is critical to keep them healthy. Um, now for diabetes also, uh, people studies have shown that people who increase the beans in their diet have improved insulin regulation. So if your body um, uses insulin better, so improving insulin sensitivity, which is really at the bottom of diabetes, is at the source of diabetes, um, so if you improve insulin sensitivity, therefore you have lower blood sugars and you don't have all the side effects um, and problems with diabetes and your, your diabetes goes away. Um, there is a significant weight loss link. Many population studies have found that uh, people who eat significant amounts of legumes tend to weigh less, um, have slimmer waist, less obesity, and lower blood pressure. So they all go together, right? Now, the elephant in the room. Right? Just want to address everyone talks about I eat beans and I'm going to have more flatulence. Well, let's talk about it. So, flatulence actually comes from two places it's um, swallowed air and fermentation in the bowels. Things such as drinking carbonated beverages, drinking through a straw, talking while eating, we're all guilty of that, chewing gum, these all cause you to swallow excess air. Um, so, that's one thing. Um, and then normal bacterial fermentation of undigested sugars is the other thing that causes flatulence. So actually the leading cause of flatulence is actually dairy um, because most of us actually can't fully digest the lactose, the sugar um, in dairy. So now, so the odor actually comes from sulfur rich foods. So it's all, you know, you smell rotten eggs, right? That's where the odor comes from. So odor comes from sulfur rich foods, um, which is primarily meat and eggs. Uh, cauliflower is, among plants, cauliflower is the worst offender when it comes to plant-based foods. Um, but so when people feel like they're having more flatulence and there's an odor to it, when they increase beans, one, they may be, you have to, 
kind of get your body used to the increased fiber. And two, if you're having increased fiber and then you're not, you're still eating uh, the things that would cause the odor, you're going to have that effect. So I would recommend that when you increase the fiber in your diet, you decrease the things that, that cause the odor. So, so those are my comments on beans for today. So try, you know, try adding them to your diet, like I noted in the notes. I generally, I have three servings a day, usually have half a cup. Um, I always have beans ready in the fridge or I have canned beans, so I either make them myself or I have canned beans. Uh, uh, chickpeas, black beans, cannellini beans, um, lentils are the ones that I, black beans are the ones that I primarily eat. They just go in most of my dishes. Uh, lentils are great. I should have said back in diabetes, lentils are great for diabetes too. They actually have shown to um, have insulin sensitivity and blood sugar modulation at that meal and also the next meal. So there's an added benefit because with the fiber, there's a slow release. Um, the starch, these starches that we process slowly, there's a slow release of, of the um, calories. So um, that's what, so I usually have the serving with lunch, a serving with dinner, and then I have hummus for a snack pretty consistently. It's a great uh, late afternoon snack as before I, as I'm getting hungry for dinner. So that is my little talk on beans today. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to drop any recipe, your favorite recipes for beans in the comments so we can all sh um, learn from them. And I look forward to um, answering questions you might have. Have a great day, everyone.